I want to go to Mars. Okay. So, uh, how, so where? Do I. Yeah. We all do. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, no, I'm okay. <laughs> you don't want to go to Mars? All right. No. Um, I've, for a long time in talks and speeches I gave, I gave, and this is more an inspirational thing to say than I don't even know how true it is. I said that right now there's a kid in high school who will be the first person on Mars. Are we in that time frame or is it more distant than that? Oh, let's see. We're talking about people on Mars in the 2030s. Oh, so um, it's not so that distant. It's not out of the realm of possibility. I used to say it a long um, that, time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it that, wasn't so good, but now you could say it. Now you could say it. I think we're on, you know, you could argue, you know, whether it's the mid 2030s or late 2030s, wow, and that's uh, we got so a lot of work to do to get there. But you know, that's what we're shooting for. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And so I, you know, I'm I'm of an age. I grew up with uh, the Kennedy Space Program with you know, uh, Mercury and Gemini and Apollo and how inspiring the 60s were. And we got to see it a launch after launch. And there was this very much this sense of building towards a goal because President Kennedy has said before this decade is out, we will land a man on the moon. Um, it's not quite so obvious the progress we're making towards Mars. I mean, we've got curiosity. We've got some amazing pictures. We're learning much more about the red planet. But but what is the what is the what are the stages there? What is the Project Mercury, for instance? Yeah, so we don't quite have a Project Mercury yet. Um, we're still we're still developing the the architectures, the systems concepts, and more importantly, the technologies that enable those systems um, to come up with what the Project Mercury would look like. Um, and where we're at now is we're iterating between you know architectures, systems, and technologies um, to try to figure out what's the most affordable um, and safe way to um, do human human missions to Mars. So. Right now, we're doing uh, research on an international space station, um, particularly on research to keep the astronauts healthy, um, safe, and productive in the space environment, um, and, and b both through um, uh, protections and countermeasures. So that's really important. And we're also developing um, you know, robotics technologies and other and demonstrating technologies on the International Space Station. Next, we'll use the Orion spacecraft and the Space Launch System, the SLS rocket, to uh, launch astronauts to, um, to to what we call cislunar space. Right now, either you know lunar orbit um, and or lunar surface. That would be through an international collaboration, and um, and learn to uh, you know operate, for, for, learn to do sustained operations uh, beyond low Earth orbit. Um, and so, right now, we're uh, putting plans in place over the next couple of years to. Uh, develop a, what we call kind of well, it's kind of well, we call it a habitat, but it really would be a, a space station or a space outpost in, lu in, in lunar orbit, um, and to demonstrate things like um, you know environmental control, more you know high, highly reliable, highly efficient environmental control and life support systems, the autonomous operations that we need to operate over you know many months, if not years. Um, we're going to look at what resources we can use on the moon. And if we use the moon as a, as a base or a staging point for uh, missions to asteroids and onto Mars, uh, we believe there's water on the moon at the poles. And so the question is, can, how hard would it, how difficult would it be to extract that water and turn it into fuel? So we could essentially have a rocket fuel depot on, on the moon. Um, and so that would be the next step is, is op, you know, operations in deep space. Um, but within days of being able to return to Earth. Uh, right now on station, we can return in hours. If we're at the moon, we're going to be able to return in days. And then beyond that, we're talking about, you know, return, you know, not being able to return for weeks or months. months. That's a whole nother yeah. leap in, you know, keeping the crew safe and dealing right. with medical emergencies and all that. So uh, that would be the follow-on the follow -on missions. Uh, we do have a mission... Um, that we uh, are, it is in the planning stages called the Ac Ast Asteroid Redirect Mission. It has two phases. One is a robotic mission that would go to an asteroid and rendezvous with an asteroid and actually scoop up a boulder um, from that asteroid and then bring it back to a uh, stable lunar orbit. And then the crew would, we launch crew to it. It would kind of uh, rendezvous with it, do a little rock climbing, sample collection, and, and wow. bring those samples back. So that's one way in which we can demonstrate in a in kind of a stepwise approach, demonstrate going and getting an asteroid or a piece of an asteroid, right. bringing it back and having crew interact with it, and look and we get samples back. Look what's there. 
Go ahead. How how big would the rocket uh, the rock be that you'd be the, going to recover? Yeah, the, yeah, the rock would be in the five meter to to ten meter range, wow. or five probably five to eight, five to eight meter range. Wow. That's so a big we're rock. talking about it's a big rock because we're talking about it, rendezvous with a asteroid that's three two three hundred meters across. Um, so and also we would also demonstrate. Um, uh, planetary protection. So after we right. grab the boulder off the surface, we would then have the spacecraft orbit the um, the larger asteroid, the large asteroid, and demonstrate we could deflect the trajectory of the asteroid just by using the gravitational forces between the spacecraft and the rock, ah. east of the asteroid, and the asteroid. So it's called the Tra gravity tractor approach to, um, pla <laughs> to yeah. planetary protection. So that is, um, if we did, can detect asteroids that may hit the Earth far enough away we can intercept them far enough out, and then it wouldn't take much of a deflection to have them miss Earth, and then we can use this, just the gravitational forces and this gravity tractor approach to, uh, to protect the planet. Has anybody done the back of the envelope calculations to the size of the ship, the mass of the ship, to be deflect that, that few fractions of a degree enough to miss yeah. Earth? Yeah, it actually, I'm trying to remember, oh gosh, it, it, we're talking thousands of pounds, not tens oh. of thousands or hundreds of thousands of pounds, oh. yeah. It just takes time, right? The more the more lighter the ship, uh, and, and this is, right, the enhanced gravity tractor approach because we, we're gaining additional mass by uh, from the rock off the surface. And so um, that, that could be your approach where you actually augment your launch mass by grabbing a rock off the surface. So, yes. So we, something then, the size uh, of a space shuttle could do it. Uh, if given enough time, yeah. yes. How uh, is that really? Uh, it's the Bruce Willis mission. Is it really? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, the fact that we're destroying asteroids. Yeah. yeah, we don't have to destroy it. We can just push it, nudge it, even. Just nudge tractor it. Again, beam it. Nudge it. Yeah, <laughs> tractor beam it. Um, and and the key is being able to detect it far enough out. Because if you can do that, yeah. it doesn't take much of a right. A deflection to have it miss the earth the, uh now if it's a little bit closer then you might not have enough time and you might have to go for the bruce Willis. how urgent how urgent is that by the way is it really a, a not i mean it's been a while since an asteroid's hit the so, earth yeah so we call it one of these one five events where one means the probability is really low and five means the consequences are really high uh, and really bad yeah <laughs> and so and so to ignore it uh, so it's a very low probability event, right? Um, based right. on what, based on the uh, distribution, the current dis uh, current knowledge of the distribution of asteroids in the solar system.